I just want to capture this. Like, I know I'm going through menopause. And I know I'm really, really hormonal. But a Biltmore Christmas is... It's magical. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But like, oh my God, what an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to get pull myself together and I'll say some more stuff about this movie. But obviously, this is, there's no way that this isn't going to be the best movie of the, of the year and instantly one of the best that I've ever seen. So I'll be back. I really wish that you guys could see how my camera situation was rigged up because it's hilarious. Like there's, it involves sitting on, um, my selfie stick on a box and then partially on top of a vitamin bottle and it's still crooked. Or is my background crooked? I don't know, but let me see if I can fix that a little bit. Oh, it's a little bit better, but I do think I hang, hung my background crooked <laughs> and I'm not in the center of it, but that's okay. Let's talk about a built more Christmas. You already saw me crying. I already did my crying intro. Um, the main thing that I have to say is if you only watch one movie this year, I don't just mean this Christmas season, I mean like all year long, the movie that you should watch is A Biltmore Christmas. I knew this movie was going to be good because we have Chris Palaha, one of my favorites of all time, um, RIP to the Mystery 101 series because I really love that. I can't believe that they ended it the way they did and we're not going to get more, but that's a whole other thing. Um, Bethany Joy Lenz. I mean, what can I say? It's Bethany Joy Lenz. Unexpected Christmas, um, which was number one whenever that was last year or the year before. I think it was the year before because last year was Ghost of Christmas Always. She's amazing pretty much in everything. And, uh, so yeah, how and and time travel? Like, how is this going to fail with cameos? Well, not even cameos. There's a cameo from I want to say it's Robert Picardo, the guy who plays the Doctor from Star Trek Voyager. It's kind of a cameo. It's a short little role, and then a little side supporting role from Commander Riker from Star Trek: Next Generation. So, and. I have watched a bunch of Voyager and I have watched nearly not enough of Next Gen. And I will at some point, and shout out to all of you Trekkies or Trekkers, whatever you prefer to be called, um, because that's fun that they're in this. Anyway. Did I already say time travel? Did I already say the part about the time travel? Because there's time travel. This movie is one, it's, it's absolutely magical. It's instantly going to be one of my favorite movies of all time. I probably already said that. I don't remember what I said when I finished watching it a few days ago. It's hilarious. It's romantic. The setting is amazing. This Biltmore estate, which I feel like I've heard the name Biltmore before, but I don't know that I knew anything about this which is in one of the Carolinas. I think it's North Carolina. And uh, yeah, the setting is beautiful. It's so funny. And I mean, you can see the premise. The only part of the premise that maybe you don't get from the trailers is that Bethany Joy Lenz is a screenwriter and she has been tasked with rewriting His Merry Wife, I believe that's the name of the movie, which was a movie from 1947 with... Um, Chris Palaha's character, which I, oh my God, I'm completely blanking on it, but you know, I always do. And she is, um, struggling with the ending because it has a happy ending and she wants to update it with like not a happy ending. And her, the boss of the studio, who's 
grandfather was the boss of the studio when the original was made is like, no, it needs to be a happy ending. Look, I'm going to get you inspired. Let's send you down there to the Biltmore Estate so you can be there where it was originally filmed and you can really feel what you need to do. It's that kind of thing. So it's she goes there. It's beautiful because this place at Christmas would be like an amazing place to go. I don't like to go on airplanes and stuff, but if I wanted to get on an airplane and fly all the way across the country, I would definitely want to go there. So she goes there and she's greeted by, hold on one second. I've been a little under the weather. And so I had to pause to drink water. Then I realized I turned this back on before I finished my ice. So hold on again. Anyway, so I get this tickle in my throat. And did I already say that if you hear any strange noises that I am having a new roof put on and um, that's fun. And um, so I'm in a condo complex. And so, um, you know, it's an ongoing process because there's like eight units, I think, in my building. And so maybe you can hear that's somebody walking on my roof. And like there's a guy that works up there. Um, and I don't, I've never seen him before, but I hear him. Then he whistles while he works, which I think is amazing. And I call him the whistler, but he doesn't know it because we've never met. Anyway, um, where was I with this movie? Um, so she gets down there. She's greeted by um, Will Riker, um, number one. Also, that's not his name in the movie, but that's who he is to me. And he's like the, I don't know what he's supposed to be, if he's the general manager of the place or just a fancy, really fancy concierge or whatever. But <clears throat> he's showing her around and takes her in this room that's like not on the tour. They're on this tour. And that's when we meet one this very surprising fun part of the movie which is a lady that's on the tour and I'm not even going to spoil anything about her but she's a freaking hoot I love her so much and but then he says this part isn't even on the tour and I'm going to go show you this and shows her um this room and in the room is this hourglass this giant hourglass that was also was a pro actual prop in the movie and She's in the in, she's in the room by herself and something she doesn't do it. I don't think she tips it over, but the hourglass tips over and she's, you know, walks out into the walks out of the room and it's like she's in 1947, but she can't even believe that she's in 1947. So she first time that this happens to her, she doesn't even accept it because people do dress up like in in period what uh clothes to like take pictures with like because they've made like a little like mini museum in tribute to the movie that was made there and so people do dress up in um period garb and take pictures and stuff like that so she's like okay that must be what it was that i was out there even though like i saw a guy who looked just like oh my god what's his name um and then she's like okay it must be just a guy cosplaying him basically and just whatever but then when it happens again then you know, that's all I'm going to tell you. That's all I'm going to tell you. Go watch the movie. I can't think of a movie in recent years that is better than this movie. Um, I just can't. Like, I'm only thinking of Hallmark stuff right now. But, I mean, hard-pressed. I, you know, I would have trouble thinking even of, like, a regular movie that's come out because the acting is so good. The writing is so good. The way it's directed, it's just so well done. Um, there's a Back to the Future reference. It, it, it's an absolute delight. I can't wait to watch it again. This will be one that I will watch every single year. And you truly will not do better than this movie this year. Like, that's all there's to it. So if you don't watch this, I don't know what to say to you. And um, I don't know who wouldn't like this movie. Cause, you know, sometimes there are movies that it's like, that's not my cup of tea or whatever. I don't know who wouldn't like this movie. I just, I don't know. Um, the 40s, the 40s, the looks, the fashions, the makeup, the hair, just the whole thing. Chris Palaha, in my opinion, was like born to play this role. I don't know who, what other person they could have pulled out of the Hallmark barn to make this movie because he is like a 1 million percent perfect and believable as this guy in 1947 like absolutely nails it and again bethany is joy lens is a delight as always and just please go watch the movie i'm going to stop talking it's already nine minutes and plus 
you know, whatever my crying. So um, thank you for being here. If you're watching on YouTube and you do things like push buttons and things, then if you want to subscribe and like it or something, that'd be fun. I would be great. I'd get a real kick out of that. So um, anyway, thanks so much. And um, I think I still have like four other movies to review from this Thanksgiving week. So um, I'll be back. Okay, bye.